Hey guys, it's Andy here, and we're back looking at Bruce in Standard. This is a Simic control deck that I've put together for you guys, and full warning you, this is running a lot of the degenerate shit that is in Standard at the moment, so if that's not what you want to play, don't watch this video. If you're interested in it, this is the deck for you. To start off the lineup, we're only running 8 creatures in the deck, and they come in the form of 4 copies of Dream Eater, which is for 6, 4, and 2 blue. It's a 4-3 Nightmare Sphinx with Flash and Flying, and then whenever it enters the battlefield, you surveil 4, if you do, you return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. A 4-3 flyer is pretty good. Its ability to flash in at any time is what makes it insane. It's an awesome card. It's also the biggest finisher in the deck. Adding to the control and finishing off the creatures, we're also running four copies of Frilled Mystic, which is for four, so two green and two blue. It's a 3-2 elf lizard wizard with flash, and when it enters the battlefield, you may counter target spell. That's it for the creatures. Frilled Mystic is insanely good. Uh, being able to flash in at any time and on ATB counter spell, just a, a massive tempo thing. Uh, we can ra ramp a little bit in this deck and ramping into this on like a turn three, stopping their turn three plays and th we've got the three two body and they don't have anything. Can usually get the ball rolling for us to just start controlling them out of the game. It's great. A little bit on the combo side and this is where it starts getting to the more degenerate side of magic. We're running four copies of Wilderness Reclamation and four copies of Nexus of Fate. So Wilderness Reclamation is for four. Three and a green. It's an enchantment that sits on the battlefield, and at the beginning of your end step, you untap all lands you control. The whole point of this card is so that we can ramp stupid early into playing stuff like Nexus of Fate or Dream Eater. So the reason we're running so many copies of the Wilderness Reclamation is because we want to have untapped lands as often as we can on our opponent's turn. So we're completely reactive to everything that our opponent's trying to do, and it just shuts them down more often than not. Being able to go, okay, uh, I, I tap out everything I've got to draw cards or do something. Go to end step, untap all my cards. Going up against a control deck and them having untapped lands is like the worst situation anyone can be in. So that's what this deck is aiming to get to, is just always having lands up to be able to do what we need to do. The Nexus of Fate that we're running in a four of is a seven cost card. So for five and two blue at instant speed, you take an extra turn after this one. And then if Nexus of Fate would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, you reveal Nexus of Fate and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So if we've got a Wilderness Reclamation out, uh, on turn 5, or say we play Wilderness Reclamation on turn 3, because we can ramp it. Wilderness Reclamation on turn 3, by turn 4, we can, on end step, tap all our lands down. They untap to the Wilderness Reclamation trigger, and then we tap them again, we've tapped for 8. So as soon as turn 4, we can start getting extra turns out of Nexus. Eventually, we get so low in our deck that we're going to be able to get Nexus every second or so turn, and just continue the onslaught of swinging in with a 4-3 flyer. Or we've controlled them to the point where they haven't got a board, so even the Frilled Mystic is getting in for damage, and it kind of just shuts them out completely. But the pseudo-infinite turn kind of loops that we can get into with this deck are enabled by Wilderness Reclamation, and that's why the two are in the deck in multiples. Uh, the ramp that I was talking about is the 4 of Growth Spiral, and Growth Spiral is an insanely good card that's come out of the Ravnica Allegiance set. Uh, so it's for two, so green and a blue. At instant speed, you draw a card, and then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So turn two, we play our land, we pass the turn. On the end step, we can throw a spiral, pay two, we draw a card, and then we can put another land down, meaning on turn three, we have we have four lands to play into the World Mystic or the Wilderness Reclamation. Insanely good. Uh, four copies of Blink of an Eye, which is for two, so one and a blue. At instant speed, it's got kicker two. So when you play it, you can pay an additional two. Uh, its ability is return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If it was kicked, you draw a card. So two for wanting, bouncing something back to their hand and us drawing a card. A lot of the times we're going to have counter magic up, so being able to bounce the stuff back to the hand or letting them think that they can do or get away with something by letting it resolve and then later on just bounce it back to the hand when they finally go to do something with it can really shit someone off. Playing this deck, you're dancing a fine line between whether or not you want to bounce stuff or whether or not you want to counter it. A lot of the times you're just going to be able to bounce it back to the hand and then when they go to play it again, you do counter it. Uh, if it does manage to squeeze through, if it's something that's worth countering and you do want to counter it, you can just bounce it back to the hand and then counter it after they go to play it again and get a card off it. Insanely good value. The four copies of Root Snare in the deck, uh, great against aggro matchups or creature matchups in general. If it's not a creature deck, that's when the Root Snares come straight out and then we just throw in other counter magic or stuff for Planeswalkers. Uh, Root Snare is for two, one and a green. At instant speed, you prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn. Uh, aggro is very prominent in the standard at the moment. Mono red, mono white, blue tempo. All of these things are a pain in the ass for something that Hasn't got a lot of creatures and otherwise can't do a whole lot. But yeah, ho holding up Root Snare for the going into the mid to late game, insanely good. Uh, running some draw card in the form of Chemist's Insight. So Chemist's Insight's for four, three and a blue. At instant speed, you draw two cards and it's got jump start. So you can 
Play it again from your graveyard by uh, paying an additional cost of discarding a card from your hand. Insanely good. Through the game, you're going to hit a few of these and being able to draw two cards every time you do them uh, with the Wilderness Reclamation, being able to, on their end step or on our end step, play two Chemist's Insight in the same turn. Great card. Uh, to finish out the spells, we're running four copies of Sinister Sabotage, which is for three, one, and two blue. An instant speed, you cannot target spell and surveil one. It's a great counter spell. The surveil is great. Just adding to our plan of end step, untap, go. It's just great. Just touching on the land base here, we're running six islands, six forests, four breeding pools, which is a forest island, comes in tapped unless you pay two life. Four copies of Hinderland Harbor, which comes in tapped unless you control a forest or island, tap for green or blue. And four copies of Memorial to Genius, which comes in tapped, tap at blue, but it's also got five tap, so four and a blue. Sacrifice it and draw two cards. Another thing that synergizes really well with Wilderness Reclamation because we can play this tapped on end step. It's going to untap, so we don't care about the ETB. And then we're going to be able to tap our lands again down to be able to tap and sack this and draw more cards. Just constant drawing cards, bouncing stuff back to their hands with the Dream Eaters and the Blink of an Eyes, negating their damage with the Root Snares, rolling into shitloads of extra turns, just gaining stupid amounts of value out of stuff like Mystic or, the again, the Dream Eater. The deck's insane, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. I strongly suggest giving this deck a shot. It's been putting up a lot of Ws on uh, X-Mage uh, recently in the playtesting that I have done. Touching on the sideboard here, we can see it's a really basic sideboard. I'm just running a lot of counter magic, some really good solid answers to flying and planeswalkers. Uh, you could probably tweak numbers a bit and stick in more token removal if that's what your meta's doing, but uh, this has worked great for me so far. So we're running three copies of Syncopate, which is for X and one blue. At instant speed, you counter target Spell, unless its controller pays X. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it in its owner's graveyard. Three copies of Negate, which is for two at instant speed, you counter target non-creature spell. Three copies of Essence Scatter, which is for two at instant speed, you counter target creature spell. Three copies of Vivian Reed, which is a five cost, five loyalty planeswalker. With plus one, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Its neg 3 ability is destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. And its neg 8 ability is you get an emblem with creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and have vigilance, trample, and indestructible. And we're also running three copies of Sorcerer's Spyglass, which is for 2. It's an artifact that sits on the battlefield, and as Sorcerer's Spyglass enters the battlefield, you look at target player's hand, choose any card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So... Hoses, Planeswalkers, they can't use any of their loyalty abilities. It's the whole reason it's in the sideboard, and it's the whole, whole reason I play in, like, all my sideboards is because it is so good against stuff like Teferi. Vivian can be a pain in the ass in a lot of situations. Yeah, it's just great for those. I strongly suggest playing this deck. It's a hell of a lot of fun. I enjoyed putting it together, and I've really enjoyed playing it, and I hope you guys do too. And that is Simic Control in Standard. Thanks for watching guys, as always don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon to see new videos as they were released. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, you can throw me a dollar on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sandersquest. And I will see you guys in the next video. Keep questing guys.